Hi, skillful teachers. Would you like to enhance your teaching with best practice instructional strategies? See some engaging technology tips and tools for the classroom? Collaborate with other skillful teachers from all over about teaching practices? Then stay tuned for Skillful Teaching with Dr. A. Welcome to the premiere video on my YouTube channel. I am so excited to begin this journey. So let's get started. To shoot this video in teacher fashion, I decided I'm going back to the basics. That's right, the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. I'm Angela McCord. I currently work as an education consultant through my LLC, MC Squared Consulting, where I partner with schools and school districts and provide professional development. I aim to increase academic outcomes, improve conceptual teaching and learning, and ignite student engagement. My teaching career began with middle school math and science. That's right. I usually get that face when I tell people that I was a middle school teacher. However, I absolutely loved it. As a matter of fact, studying and learning to meet the needs of middle schoolers contributed most to my skillful teaching. I was always trying to find a way to reach a middle schooler. In addition to working as a National Board Certified Teacher of Mathematics, I also served as an administrator, technology specialist, and academic coach during my 18 years as an educator. Now that we've gotten that out of the way. What the heck is this channel going to be all about? The purpose of Teaching with Dr. A is to motivate, inspire, and uplift teachers everywhere so that we may continue to be the best teachers ever. Did I say ever? I meant ever. I'm devoting this channel and sharing my research, my successes and failures, as an educator and experiences of the amazing skillful teachers I work with through coaching and consulting. I want this channel to become a place where teachers can find valuable information to enhance their knowledge on the journey of skillful teaching. Look for a variety of videos related to things like time management, relating to students, teacher side hustles, and most of all, taking care of the whole teacher, as well as some classroom giveaways and more. I'll do my best to keep it to about 15 minutes or less. You know, like our direct instruction in the classroom should be limited to before students are. Leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see. Look for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday and more frequent when possible. First Tuesdays, I'm going to dedicate to Technology Tuesday, where I'll highlight technology tools, tips, and tricks to make your life easier, especially now in this time of e-learning. And if that sounds familiar to some of you, you may have worked with me at Irma Middle School. Where will my information come from? In addition to my experiences and those of other teachers, I will be sharing what leading authors and researchers in the field of education have contributed it. There are a plethora of educational books to help guide us on the skillful teaching journey, which leads to a book talk, a book talk Tuesday. And the first one I'll share actually inspired my channel name, The Skillful Teacher. This is an awesome book that really enhanced my skills as an educator when I was teaching in the classroom on a daily basis. I still refer to it now. It combines theory with practice, outlines how to match instructional strategies with the needs of students, and focuses on the main critical areas of the classroom performance. If you'd like to check it out, I have a link here in the description box below. If you've read it or have a copy, Leave me a comment and share your favorite chapter and why you enjoy that book. Why not? As an education consultant and coach, I've had the opportunity to see the positive impact and outcomes of quality teaching on so many students. Unfortunately, I witnessed the opposite impact as well. However, 
While working and coaching with hundreds of teachers, I never met one teacher that indicated their goal to be a terrible teacher. So why not share the awesomeness that I've witnessed along the way? Also, I feel that this is a great way to collaborate with so many more teachers and continue to expand my professional learning network as well. So there you have it, the five W's. Thanks for watching my premiere video. And if you have a topic idea that you'd like to hear about, place it in the comment section below. Tune in next time for the first episode of Tech Knowledge Tuesday. It's one that you don't want to miss in this e-learning time. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to get notified when new videos are uploaded. And please share with other skillful teachers because we know that quality teaching is quality education. Have you been thinking about becoming an assistant principal? Do you know if you've got what it takes or not? Has someone told you that you would make a great assistant principal? Would you like to know in advance maybe what some of the benefits and cons are? Well, stay tuned. Hi, skillful teachers, and welcome to Skillful Teaching with Dr. Angela. If you're new to my channel, first of all, thanks for watching. I'm Angela McCord, skillful teacher turned education consultant. I created this channel to motivate, inspire, and uplift teachers everywhere, and also build a bigger collaboration and professional learning network for myself and others. Please check out this video, which is my premiere video, and it will outline what kind of videos I will have on this channel. So today you are in for a treat. This is my Wisdom Wednesday series. And today I have a guest that's going to talk to us about, so you want to be an assistant principal? Sometimes we as teachers don't know if we want to step into that realm or not. So I have a skillful teacher turned assistant principal and she's going to talk with us today well actually you're going to see our interview i know you are going to enjoy her her name is davina coleman and without further ado check out our interview thank you so much miss davina coleman for joining us today on my channel so you want to be an assistant principal. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So let's get started. We have some questions for our skillful teachers today. Um, there may be teachers who are thinking about the role of an assistant principal and they may be aspiring assistant principals. I know from experience that you were definitely a skillful teacher in the classroom, which is why I asked for you to come today and share some information with us. First off, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Davina Coleman, as she said. I'm the assistant principal at Robert Smalls International Academy, pre-K through eight school here in Beaufort, South Carolina. I started out my teaching career in Hawaii, um, teaching adult learners, Marine Corps, sellers, and their dependents. Shifted from Hawaii to South Carolina, where I started my career in the public education field. I taught at Buford Middle School for five years. There I was a math teacher, middle school math teacher, um, department chair, grade level chair, you name it. I jumped in and took on over that role with honor, and it was a privilege under the leadership of Carol Ingram. And then I shifted to Robert Smalls International Academy where I was the numeracy coach for two years and now I'm currently in my second year as their assistant principal. That is awesome. Quite an impressive track record for a skillful teacher. Tell us why you aspired to be an assistant principal. You know, um, so for those viewing who don't know, Angela was my numeracy coach. And so part of working with instructional coaches inside of the classroom and having the leadership of the principal that I had, they're pushers and they will push you to greatness. They will find that untapped potential within you and they know they have a way of bringing it out. And so I never had aspirations at the beginning to be an administrator, but as I went through the leadership of being in the classroom and being put in all the teacher leadership positions, I realized 
realized that I had a little bit more in me that could go beyond the classroom. I was helping to develop induction teachers and helping to evaluate those who are on staff with me, my peers. Matter of fact, a little known, I guess a little known fact is when I came to the middle school that I initially started with here in Beaufort, Angela, I don't even know if you noticed, but the person that I student taught with, within two years, I was her evaluator. And so I moved pretty quickly within my teaching career. And I knew that I had a knack for developing teachers. So my first thing was instructional coaching. And as I became an instructional coach, I realized that there was more leadership within me. And that's what put me on the path um, to become an administrator. Um, I love how you mentioned about developing teachers. It is all about that relationship. And you did that as a teacher yourself with those relationships. Tell me some of the qualities that you think a skillful teacher has. The first quality, and people probably are not going to believe that this is my first quality, but it's to be coachable. You know, a lot of people think, I got to know my content and all this other stuff. It doesn't matter how much you know your content, how much you know pedagogy, but if you're not coachable, you cannot be a skillful teacher. There's a book called Good to Great, and it says you have to have three things to move from a level of being just good to the place of greatness. So you have to have passion, a skill set, and the ability to make money. When you come to become a teacher, you're going to have the ability to make money. You're on contract, so you're going to get paid. So that's, that's not an issue. So now the next thing you need to deal with is do you have a skill set? You can come with the skill set. I will say, and it's, it's not arrogant, but it's me being confident. I was a darn good teacher, but... Knowing my craft did not make me great. It was the fact that I was coachable. There were things that I knew and there were some things that I really did not know. And being able to bounce ideas off and it's not being coached just by those who are in a supervisory role above you, but being coached by your peers too. Being able to collaborate, that collaboration is huge. In addition to that, to be a skillful teacher, you got to have passion. You know, when you show up to work in education, you're not showing up to go to a job. Principal Kafale said, you show up and you go to your mission field. And so if you're a skillful teacher, you show up every day to your mission. And when you show up to a mission, you know that whether if it's good or bad day, you are going to tough it out and you're going to hang on in there. You're going to show up for your kids. We have a motto this year at our school is don't just show up, but step up. And so skillful teachers step up. You only show up to work every day for that check. And you love your babies. You have a passion for children. And I'm not just talking about the children who behave. You have a passion for all kids, not just the children who understand your content and can master it. Uh, you have a passion for all kids. So if you're a skillful teacher, you got to be coachable. There are days that I was coached by my children because I made a mistake in teaching or I made a, I harmed a relationship I had with my kids. So coaching can come from many directions and you have to have a passion for what you do when you show up for your mission, not your job on a day to day. Great characteristics of a skillful teacher. Thank you so much for sharing that. No um, tell me some of the benefits and challenges that are faced by assistant principals. Ooh, girl, <laughs> we got, we, there's, there's benefits and there are cons no matter what you do. I think the greatest benefit is being able to lead and allow your leadership to come through. But I have to say that with caution because a lot of people think that when you lead, you tell people what they have to do. I'm talking about that servant leadership. When you come along with your staff. Another benefit is the relationships you build. You know, as a classroom teacher, one of the things I've always missed is the relationships I had with my kids. You know, you get 30 or 35 kids in that room and you know them for a whole year, right? And if you're in a middle school or high school setting, you have at least four sets of them. You're going to have over 100 kids that you know really well. That's a con to me being a principal is I don't have those in-depth relationships with all my kids. You know, you get those in-depth relationships with some of your children. You know all of them by faith, but one-on-one -on -one relationships, you don't have it like you have it in the classroom. So like Teacher Appreciation Week, girl, I used to love my uh, gift cards and all that mm -hmm. other good stuff. I don't get that no more. <laughs> I have some kids who bring it, but it used to be filled with so much joy and love during Teacher Appreciation Week. 
a benefit is the relationships you get to build with more than just the kids that would have been in your classroom. So now I'm open to relationships with 715 kids, not just 100. Um, I'm open to relationships with 70 staff members, not just the seven that I worked on the team with. One thing that happens when you're a teacher, you can have a staff with a lot of people, but you only get to know the people on your hallway. And so you walk by some days like, who that is? You know, or... <laughs> Hey girl, but you really know who, don't know who that girl is. I now know 70 staff members. I can tell you something great about each one of my staff members that I didn't get a chance to know inside the classroom. So that is a pro for me. Another pro is you're getting to see your vision, which is also a con. It has a flip side to it because as an assistant principal, you want to be a leader. So you have vision, So you come to work with vision, but you have to be reminded that this is not your school. That sometimes can be kind of tricky and challenging because you want your vision to come to life, but it's not your season for your vision to come to life. It's the season for your principal's vision to come along and for you to come alongside your principal. So one of the things that I would say that is challenging, but you have to maneuver really skillfully, there's a saying that you should blossom where you're planted. And so in blossoming where I am planted, there are some times that I need to understand that as long as my principal and I have the same end result. So we're both headed in the same direction. We want student achievement, right? We want a school with great culture. As long as our end goal is the same, it doesn't matter how she navigates getting to that end goal. I might see us doing something and it's going to take us A to B and we're done and we're there. She can do it or he can do it and it's going to take A to B. Z to get it done. My job is not to become frustrated because it's going to take A to Z to get it done when we could have done it in A to B. It's my job to go with them A, B, C, D and move on because of the fact our end goal is the same. So if I'm going to boss somewhere on planet, whatever, whether I like the decision of my principal or not, I travel and I maneuver with my principal because our end goal is the same. And so it can be a con, especially if you're a visionary. Like I'm a visionary. I want my visions to come to life. You know, like I got this wonderful idea. Let's do it. But it's not my season. It's my season to make the vision manifest itself according to the direction of my principal leadership. So another challenge you will face, but I'm going to teach you how to overcome this challenge. And I mentioned it earlier that it can be a lonely walk. And so with it being a lonely walk, it's critical as an administrator for you to have a mentor. That mentor is not just someone that you can... Um, that can be your confidant that you can speak with, but your mentor helps to guide you. Everybody in your life, you need a, what I call a spiritual Sherpa. So if you were climbing a mountain, there are Sherpas that teach you how to breathe as you go a little bit higher in elevation. Well, this realm of administrators, a different level of uh, elevation than being a teacher. So you need to have a coach that can teach you how to breathe <laughs> in this realm of being an administrator. They can give you the guide and the tools that you need. So if you are um, currently an administrator or you have hope of becoming an administrator, you must have a mentor. That is extremely critical. So that's just some of the pros and cons that off the top of my mind. Well, those are great. That is great <laughs> insight. That is that is great insight. Thank you so much for that wisdom. I have a little strategy. You've probably seen it in the classroom, three truths and a lie. So I'm just going to kind of end it with that and do it, um, you know, webinar interview style. So as far as the position of assistant principal, tell us three truths and a lie. Okay, let's start with the lie first. <laughs> The lie that a lot of people want to believe is that we know everything. We don't know everything. You get a lot of emails just like we get a lot of emails. You have to take time to read it. If I can pan my office, you will see all the emails I have to print just so I can make sure I stay in the know. But there are some things that you're not going to be in the know about because as assistant principal, we're all given roles. So for example, my role is instruction. So I'm going to know instruction and I'm going to know testing. The role of the other AP is like building and facilities and textbooks. That's not my role to know. And so if I have somebody to come ask me about a work order, I can't help you. Like there's nothing I can do for you because that's his role. In addition, there are people who are tasked with certain stuff in the building. And so if I as an administrator know everything, then I'm not building the capacity of those who I lead. 
So that is a lie. We do not know everything. Now we can research and find your answer, but we don't know everything. So stop putting that pressure on us because we're not rising to the occasion with that. So that's the lie. <laughs> a true, we work hard. And I need to say that because as a teacher, when I used to look at some of my APs, I'm like, what they do all day? I'm in this class slaving and <laughs> they just walking around on the walkie talkie. You know, you really didn't think that your administrators did that much. I judged a lot <laughs> as a teacher when it came to uh, my administrator staff. Now that I'm in the role, I realize many of my judgments were in error. When everybody else go home, administrators are still in the building. When you're grading, when teachers are grading papers, we're dealing with some HR stuff that you have no clue about. So that is a truth that people really need to understand is your administrators work hard. Another truth that people need to know is as an administrator can be a very lonely role. You go through things and you can't tell people. You got to wear the whole school on your shoulders sometimes and you have to smile in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your frustrations. You can't share it. You can't share your principal just got on your nerves, the other AP got on your nerves, and the whole teacher staff getting on your nerves. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> everybody going to work your last nerve. You can't share that. And so it can be very lonely because you have to deal with everything yourself. You have to have a place to vent, but that place to vent cannot be in your school. So there is no confidant that you find within your school. And if you like me, I don't got no husband. So <laughs> there is not, I can't go home and say, babe, da, 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 da. So a lot of stuff, and you can't talk to your family members because they're not educators and they don't get it. And so it can be a very lonely role um, being an administrator. And I guess my third, the third truth is, can I do another lie? <laughs> Let me just say this. You have always been one to reinvent the wheel ever since I met you, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, good. Another lie is we like doing discipline. We do not like doing discipline. This is the, <laughs> discipline is the least favorite part of my job. I love going to classrooms and being an extra teacher. I like observing and providing valuable feedback that's going to help push you further. Like those are things that I enjoy. Discipline in children is not enjoyable. When you did, when you become the disciplinarian, you are harming the relationship with kids over and over again. I have a student and he run it as a joke. I have a, I hate being in an office, so I'm not in this space a lot. I have a mobile car. And so I'm in the hallways a lot. And so if a, a child gets a referral, I'm going with my card and my laptop, knock, knock, come here, baby, let's talk. But he said, oh, goodness, there go B and C, D and C. I said, D and C, what do you mean? No, B and C. I said, B and C, what does that mean? He said, bad news, Coleman. <laughs> he said, every time you come with that card, Miss Coleman, it's bad news. I got another referral. Luckily, we have a great relationship. Uh, <laughs> me and him are really good. But there's other students who that might be the stigma. I'm, I'm bad news, Coleman, because when sometimes when you have to deal with me, especially for the kids who get a lot of referrals, before I can go and make deposits into them, I'm withdrawing them, withdrawing things because I have to go put them in in-school suspension. Or I have to suspend them because of, the, of what they did. And so that's not, a, that's not enjoyable. We don't just want to discipline. And because I was a teacher before, those are the things I love. I love children. I love my relationships with kids. I don't only want to be seen as a disciplinarian. To me, some days it's like, it's just not fair. So I did two truths and two laughs. Thank you so much. I will take it. <laughs> Thank you again for um, this time. I appreciate it so much you taking the time out, um, Ms. Davina Coleman, to do this interview for us because you gave some valuable insight. I really like how you shared the insight where as a teacher, you thought administrators might not have been doing as much because one thing I've heard um, not a whole lot of people, but you know, as I go and collaborate with teachers in different places and different schools, I have heard conversations with me before where someone would say, you know, I'm ready to get out of the classroom. I'm, this is too much work. I'm tired of taking work home and grading all these papers, but I'm glad you clarified that because administrators have a whole lot of work too. It's just a different type of work. Right. Yeah. And be honest, it's um, probably more stressful than the work that you take home. Now, I'm not going to say probably. I'm just going to go ahead and put it. I'm put this on record. Being an administrator, 
the work that you have to take home is more stressful than the work you take home as a teacher. When I take home work as a teacher, I'm taking home my lesson plans. I'm planning for my children's lessons. I'm grading papers. You know, I might be making phone calls, uh, whatever the case may be. When I take work home as an administrator, sometimes what I take home is somebody else's career. Do I have, do I need to write them up? Is a letter going to go in and file for what they did? You know, that's a lot of weight. When somebody's whole career lays in your hand and you're a determining factor or what do you do? You know, you have ethics that you have to go by. So there's no sweeping stuff under the rug if you was wrong. I have to deal with that. I have to take home the fact that a child is missing or a child was abused and I can't share that with staff members. I have to take that weight on weight and I have to take that home and I have to figure that out. And so I would have never, like I said, I judge hard when it came to administrators and I need to go on record and say, oh, <laughs> like, I, I apologize to every administrator on the behalf of a teacher who thought you really did not do much. And now, don't get me wrong, y'all, because there's some people that don't do that much. So let me, I'm going to come closer to the camera and say, there's some, there are some administrators who are not pulling their weight. They're being paid a lot of money to do not that much of work. I'm just not one of them. I work. <laughs> and this has been one of the toughest jobs that I've had in my educational Career. I know that someone listening has heard something valuable to help them in making decisions. They may have been thinking, hey, I want to be an AP, or they may have been um, thinking maybe someone else told them, hey, you should go into administration, and they might feel like, oh, that I don't think, I don't know that that's for me or not, or what have you, but I think that, um, you know, your sharing was great today, and all of that information that you gave in light of the career, the preparedness along the way, I just thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So, you want to be an assistant principal? Then take some of those tips, recommendations, and ideas from skillful teacher to assistant principal, Ms. Davina Coleman. She shared some great attributes from skillful teacher all the way to assistant principal that you may possess. Also, there's a book that she mentioned, Good to Great. If you'd like to check that out, I have a link in the description box below. And that's a great book. It's really about business, but if you think about it, as a teacher, the best way to run that classroom is gonna be like a business. I have some other great interviews coming up, so go ahead and give me a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and like and share my video also leave a comment if you'd like to see some interviews with certain skillful teachers let me know i'm open for ideas because we know that quality teaching is quality education did you turn into a distance learning teacher at a moment's notice have you been scrambling for just the right tools to maximize your e-learning? Then stay tuned. Hi, skillful teachers, and welcome back to Skillful Teaching with Dr. Angela, where quality teaching is quality education. If you're new to my channel, Welcome, I'm Angela McCord, Math, Technology, and School Improvement Consultant, and I've created this channel to motivate, inspire, and uplift teachers everywhere. In this episode of Technology Tuesday, I'm going to share with you three of my favorite web apps that will make your life as a distance learning teacher much easier. Some of you might be able to attest to the fact that most K-12 educators are still not really ready to teach online. However, shout out to all of you teachers who have been holding it down and keeping the learning going during this COVID-19 pandemic, training or no training. But let's keep it real. In order for students to have successful learning experiences online, their teachers need to be able to support and have support for online teaching because it's not about a flashy tool or a video site. It's about how you plan for and choose the right tools to align the desired learning student outcomes. I digress. App number one, 
WiserMe or Wiser.me. This app easily adds any media, video, audio, or images to create an engaging and interactive worksheet for students. Let's take a look. Okay, we have up now wiser.me or wiser.me. So with this website, this is going to turn any regular worksheet or um, written practice sheet that you have, you can easily convert it to something engaging. So I'm gonna show you how. Um, this is a free version, what I have. You can actually um, activate the premium version. Uh, it's $3 a month, but you know me, I like that free 99. So we're gonna go with that. Um, this is the community section where we can see other worksheets that have already been created. So for instance, I saw one before and I'm going to Google it. Um, it was pretty neat. I'm just going to type in gorillas fractions. So I, oh, I see it's very popular. It looks like a lot of folks have copied it. Okay. <laughs> because it's very cool. Okay. So I looked at this as well. I'm just going to click on this first one equivalent fractions and it is so engaging so it's talking about gorillas so i'm just going to pull this up to show you um just an example of how you can create a quick interactive worksheet and you can copy it here and that's like so many folks have done right and it's yours right and then you can um submit it out to your students, assign it to them, or send them a link, and then they can um, interact with it, and then you will get the results back into your account. So with this one, I just wanna show you how um, they have a video here. They've imported a quick video, um, probably, yeah, from YouTube, and then they have a couple of questions for the students to answer, an article here to read as well, and then um, these are some multiple choice questions here. And then here there's even a little matching. So just to show you how you can do that, that's neat. Um, that is not the correct answer, folks. Okay, I like this one and I think everyone else does too. Although it's out of Tennessee, they are actually linking to a live gorilla cam. So when they click there, they are able to see what's going on at the zoo with the gorillas. I think that is really neat. So I think that's why a lot of people like that one. So I'm gonna go back, going back to the community to look at one more. Um, let's see if I want to search for a popular, let's see, an ELA popular one is maybe the outsiders. Let's see if anything is there. I'm just going to put in the outsiders and there we have it. Oh my gosh, here's a final exam. I slept that one last time. So there's a final exam. Here's um, some different chapters. This will give you a lot of ideas. You can actually copy some of these and use them as your own and then get ideas to create your own. But these are very interactive. It's engaging because like I said, you can upload videos, links to websites, pictures, text, and have the students interact and do things like, let's see this final exam, what's here. All right, on this final exam here, I'm gonna scroll up and let's see. See, you have a large block of um, text space here to complete a well-written answer. And then um, here at the same, Okay, and then you also have a answer recorder. How neat is that? So everyone doesn't learn in the same way, or maybe they don't wanna type their answer. They can record their answer. So this is something a teacher has placed in as an option. Go ahead and click that and record your voice and talk to me. OMG, isn't that great? Because you want to hear from your students. You haven't been doing that, right? If they're distance learning. So this is great. And this is kind of good for blended learning as well, which is gonna be kind of the same almost, used the same way anyway. So I hope you enjoy Wiser Me. Give it a try. I know your students will because you can take a regular worksheet and spruce it up. What's neat about this as well is if you assign one of these worksheets, interactive worksheets, then you will get a link. So here you can assign it to your class. You can get a link or go ahead and create a class and have it assigned that way. And then you can also have the option to save a lot of time for you and give students automatic feedback 
on those questions like the drag and drop, the matching and things like that, the multiple choice, and it will auto correct that. And then that way they will know right away once they're done, if the answer is correct or not, once they submit their answers. So that's really neat and saves you a lot of time, but still interactive for the students. App number two, Zoom. This one sounds a little weird to say, but it's a spectacular app. If you're wanting students to be more autonomous while they're working and self-directed in their learning, Zoom allows you to assign or create inquiry focused activities where students can analyze, create products and self-evaluate themselves with a rubric. Let's see it. All right, guys, hands down, WebQuest period are a great way to scaffold higher order thinking. Z-U-N-A-L.com. And then you will get to this site and be asked to uh, register for a free account. So you can browse and see all the different web quests that are available. So you would just go to your subject area. I'm going to try to lean away from math a little bit. Let's go over here to language arts. All right, six through eight. I'm not leaving my six, you know, six, eight middle school. Then from there, you're going to have all the six through eight English language arts um, web quests that are shared out for you to look at. Some of them even have um, reviews. And so like here's one with um, two reviews and they're five stars. So I might want to look in here. This is about the K. So this novel. And then you can just click on here. And I'll give you a little insight about how the web quest is created. So here they all are going to have pretty much, well, they're not going to have all these missions. Okay. This lady has gone, um, Katie has gone well out. Okay. With all, with a lot of missions, but this might be what you need if your students are, you know, distance learning. So anyway, you have all of, um, everyone is going to have a welcome page introduction task. And then you have, um, work for the students to do, to look for, that would be their task. Um, and then also evaluation. And then you also get an about the authors page and a review. Okay. This time I'm going to click on math and let's go to math nine through 12. And then from there, I'm going to scroll down and look at the different, um, topics here. Now you can also search by content and you can type in a few keywords. So that's another way to search. If you're looking for something specific, so let's say I want to um, find a web quest on quadratics. So I'm going to type that in and then I'm going to see everything that has that keyword in below. So from here, I see that the first one, um, there's saving the world of quadratics. Uh, there's also a basic quadratic equations, having fun while solving quadratics. So like I said, you can just go through, look at some of the topics and you can favorite them, save them as your own. And then um, what you can do is use them like they are. You just give that URL to a student and have them go in and go through this, or you could actually um, copy and paste it. I'm going to go to my profile and I thought I was a pro user, but like I said, this is free um, forever. But if you want to um, create more web quests or be able to copy them and um, yeah, this says I'm, I have a pro account, but it also says see pricing and upgrade. So I guess they want me to pro some more. All right, I hope you enjoy Zuno. I know your students will because they will have some fun and be able to go all over the web being directed by YOU. App three, Simaloo. This is a content integration platform that will help keep you super organized. In March, they announced the pro version is gonna be free to all educators for the duration of the COVID. I know that skillful teachers like to save those coins. Let's check it out. Nothing helps you more when you are a distance learning teacher than staying organized. 
and Symbaloo is going to help you do that. If you do not have this, you need this in your life, okay? So you're just gonna go to Symbaloo.com right here and it's gonna prompt you to sign up for a free account. You can also get the pro features right now. It's really gonna give you um, these organizational features in what they call web mixes. So this is a web mix, EDU games, and you see the tab right here. This is a web mix, education, tab and then I also created some on my own I added some by just clicking on the little plus button right here and you can add your own name it and then add it and get started now why is this such a cool feature well the first part um, you can go in and actually search for other symbols or web mixes that are already created and you can do that copy and you know kind of edit on your own thing like we started doing a long time ago with PowerPoints some of you are watching and you're probably saying, I've never used PowerPoint in the classroom. Well, I did for a short while, I must admit. Okay, but anyway, this is really cool. And what's neat about it also is that once you create a web mix, you can then share it with your students. Um, you can organize like some elementary teachers. I see they may have a science corner, a math corner, ELA and social studies. Um, high school teachers may have an assessment corner, a skills and practice corner, so on and so forth. It's really neat in that way. And then you just quickly add a web mix. And if you want to share it with your students, here's a blank one here. You're just going to click on this little share button. It's going to prompt you to go ahead and share that. I've already shared this. It's telling me I did this before, but this is what comes up and you can share it privately or publicly. And then it's going to give you an embed link a web link you can share it with your students in any format shoot it to them in an email you know if you're on twitter if you have a facebook group um, parents can also see it and then they don't need an account or anything to log in they will just see that nice web mix when they click on the link and if you have google classroom it's even better integrates right there with your google classroom so that's um, very resourceful and they also start off with a couple of web mixes you'll have these already in your account when you first start and they have some handy dandy ideas of um, different websites that you might want to go to and so that's why I love symbol to add one you're just gonna click on the tile and then drop down here paste your website in I'm gonna do the gizmos site which is um, explorelearning.com then you tab down and if it can find it see there it's gonna make the thumbnail automatically for you if not or if you want to change it to something else you can click on one of these options or upload your own if you like the text that's here like I'm just gonna take out Giz um, learning explore learning and just call it gizmos and then that's the only thing that will show up and then hit show text and it'll show up on your tile and that's it you are ready hit save and boom see how quick that was you have added one to your site all right so the last thing I want to show you is how you can discover other web mixes so you don't have to start from a beautiful clean slate you can maybe search and find some ones that you like copy and paste it um, and then add your own to it because that's pretty much what I did with this one up here I added my own to the education see there I added my own link there so you're gonna go to the gallery so from the gallery I'm just gonna search for eighth grade math and then hit search and then it's gonna give me a lot of from here I can go in and just look at some of the different ones like here's even science I don't know why that says science I put in math but as you can see there are different ones and you can look at and at minimum you can get an idea of how other teachers have created their web mixes and or you can actually copy them and create them and edit them and use them as your own so get to it this is a great resource to stay organized and not only for you but also to keep your students from going rogue those are the three guys let's keep these things in mind one more detailed instructions or video tutorials are available for all three of these apps i didn't go into great detail about each one because i wanted you to stick around to the end of the video number two I chose these videos because they enhance instruction versus just giving students practice skills. And sometimes you want to be able to know if a student knows an answer to one or two questions. You don't want to look at a full blown report. 
And lastly, remember equity and access. Students shouldn't feel punished for being without. I hope this video was helpful to you. So give it a thumbs up and share with other skillful teachers. Leave me a comment and let me know what tech knowledge you want to know more about. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with another skillful teacher because we know quality teaching is quality education. Thank you for watching Skillful Teaching with Dr. Angela. I'm Angela McCord, skillful teacher and education consultant. Thank you for tuning in today to the Teacher Side Hustle. I have a very special guest that I will share with you. And don't leave without subscribing because at 500 subscribers, I will have a super duper drawing for a prize. Thank you so much for watching my channel. You are definitely in for a treat today, skillful teachers. I have a skillful teacher here with me today who is going to be outlining her side hustle, Miss Valencia Kinlaw Scott. So I had the pleasure of working with this young lady in Beaufort County, and she was also a skillful teacher and a fabulous teacher to my daughter, G. Ashley. So I decided to have her on today to talk about the teacher side hustle because you are really going to be interested. Uh, Ms. Kinlaw Scott has created her own business on the side as a teacher and she has Brown Girls Designs. So she is into creating graphic tees and tumblers and she does a great job. Now, I didn't realize this was her side hustle until later on when I first met her as a teacher of my daughter. I had some other benefits of her side hustle. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't want to talk about those cupcakes and cakes right now. She doesn't want to talk about that anymore. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to have her tell us a little bit about herself. Ms. Kinlaw Scott, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your skillful teaching journey. Sure. Okay, well, I am a business education teacher. I've been teaching for uh, 18 years now. And as you mentioned before, my first side hustle was uh, baking cakes. Uh, I kind of just fell into that one because I like cakes, love to eat cakes. But we're here today to talk about my current side hustle, which is making graphic tees and tumblers. And I kind of just fell into that because my uh, son is a um, plays football, my daughter's cheerleader, um, and just a parent who purchased shirts from another business and I blinged them, you know, got them blinged out. And I was tired of spending my money with someone else. So I decided I was going to try to make them for myself. And so I started making my own t-shirts just so that I could wear it to the game, put my son's name on it, his number. And then other parents would ask me. And so I started making, it, making shirts for them. And more and more people started asking. So then that's kind of how it became to be. And 15 years later, I'm still uh, kind of making shirts. But now we have a, a bona fide business, Brown Girl Designs. Um, I have a Facebook page, a website, should be launched soon. Um, so yeah, that's where we are now. That's awesome. And I'll be sure to put all of that information so people can contact you in the description box below. So tell us a little bit about some of the questions that people have asked you over the years about your um, business. For instance, starting up. Tell us about what it takes to start up. Starting up, can uh, it can vary. I mean, it just based, depends on your personal situation. Some people are able to, you know, invest 500. Some people are able to invest 1,000. So really that's going to kind of determine how you go about um, starting up. If you, if you have less money available to you, then you'll probably need to purchase more uh, uh, items that are already made so that you can uh, make t-shirts faster. If you have more money at your disposal, you may be able to buy more equipment as far as, you know, a cricket. I started off with 
a smaller machine and then I graduated to a larger machine. Um, so I have a few machines. The more resources you have, the more items you can, you know, you can purchase. Um, but you can start off with probably as little as two hundred dollars. You can use, you know, a site and buy the transfers and get you some t-shirts and definitely get YouTube because there's a wealth of information there. Uh, people who have, who are where you are, you know, in the beginning, the middle, the end, in different stages, and they can show you how they progressed and the things they did and tips and tricks. So that's definitely one of the places that you can start, but there's definitely a range as far as the startup costs. And it sounds like there's some pretty good support out there too. So if you're looking for, you know, someone to bounce ideas off of or to ask questions um, to get started, there's some support groups as well. Absolutely. There's tons of support groups out there. As with any group, you know, some people are supportive, some people not so much. So you have to get the support where you can, but um, there are lots of sites on Facebook that are geared towards women who are crafting. Some people are just crafting for fun. Some people are in it full-time, 100%. So you have different variations of people in business. Um, but there's, I mean, plethora of sites on Facebook. I just kind of, usually once you join one, I think the first one I joined was Brown, uh, Black Girls Cricket. Once you join one, the other ones will start popping up and people will mention them in the group and then you'll join another one. And then before you look, you'll be in 20 groups. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's our life right now, right? 20 groups. <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about the resources that um, it takes to have a business such as yours. Okay. So um, as I mentioned before, you're going to have the equipment side. Um, right now I have a couple cutters. I have two printers, you have to have a couple computers because things break down and they malfunction. So you have to have a backup plan. I have a heat press. I have one, but there are lots of people that have several heat press because things, like I said, things fail. And if you have an order and your heat press doesn't plug in, it's not like you can go run to Walmart and buy a heat press. So you've got to have um, a backup plan for that. Um, shirts, I have some shirts behind me. Um, so you have to have that and lots of vinyl. <laughs> so, yeah. Lots of vinyl. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about the time commitment that it takes. Um, since this is a side hustle and you are a full-time teacher, um, how does that work? Um, I would say the time commitment is going to be, it's going to vary based on the type of business you have. If you are a person who relies heavily on pre-made transfers, meaning that someone else has made them and you're just purchasing them, it will cost you more money. So you'll have less profits, but you will have more time. You'll, ha you'll have to invest less time. So you'll have more time to yourself and to your family. If you're on the other end where you creating everything, everything is very customized and you are the artist, you're creating the files, um, you're cutting the files, that can be very time consuming, um, but you have more of the profits to yourself. So it just depends, it's a large scale. So you have to just decide where you wanna go. Now I go from both ends daily, <laughs> okay? There's some things that I don't wanna invest the time in to make and I decided like, eh, yeah, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna spend four hours today doing that. So I'm gonna go and pay someone else that has already created it and then I'm gonna use that file. Or I see something that's pretty simple and I don't want to pay someone to create it. I can do it in maybe 30 or 40 minutes and I'm going to go do it. So it just, you just go back and forth. There's no um, box as far as that's concerned. It just depends on your personal lifestyle and what, you know, basically you want to get out of your business. It sounds very interesting and it sounds like you can begin with not so much. If you have a little to start with and you can build on that and learn more and more and um, build up as well. But either way, having a side hustle and having a home-based business is going, I mean, it's great for anyone because the one thing it's going to do is help you save with taxes. So everybody Absolutely. likes to talk about, you know, you know, Donald Trump, sometimes I think, and I heard a wise woman say, and she's a financial consultant, and she talked about 
you know, while we don't see his tax returns, you know, I don't think it's so much that he's doing something illegal. If we saw it, I mean, he has the blueprint, you know? Right. He has the he's got all the secrets. All the secrets. We don't know. Mm -hmm. It would all be out, right? Right. So, you know, I'm trying to learn them as well as you a little bit at a time. So we know Absolutely. that having a home-based business and being a teacher and having that side hustle, that's going to save us in a lot of taxes, okay? Mm -hmm. So tell us, um, let's talk about three tips you might want to tell people that want to go into this business, graphic tees and designs. And by the way, you talked about tumblers as well. I wanted to show one of my tumblers that um, you made for me. This is awesome. I hope you guys can see it there. This is very nice. Just give us some tips. I would say for this business, it's going to be um, a lot of marketing and it doesn't have to be marketing that costs you money. I mean, you have Facebook is there. You can utilize Facebook, you can utilize word of mouth, um, but you have to market. No one's going to know that you're selling shirts or what you have available if they can't see it. So, I mean, I market it all the time. I'm marketing it right now. I'm all wearing a t-shirt. It's usually mine. Nice. Um, and your kids probably, I'm sure. And my kids wear my shirts a lot. But people your come son, right? <laughs> right. Say, where'd you get that shirt? And I, and I, oh, I made it. And then I give them a card. So um, you have to be a person who's willing to market. Um, another thing is I would say um, you have to be willing to put some time. It's not something that you're going to learn overnight. There are, um, there are some learning curves. And, you know, even now, I've been doing this forever. There's always something new in a t-shirt business. So there's, I'm always learning. I, you know, I stay on YouTube, Facebook, learning something new. Um, yeah. So that's the skillful teacher mindset. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Learning a, a better way to do something, an easier yeah, way, a cheaper way to do something. Um, if you are not of that mindset, you're going to waste a lot of time and money. To be honest, shirts are very easy to sell. I mean, they're a low end commitment. People commit to $15, $20. They will. So I would say, because I've seen a lot of people want to do t-shirt business because it sounds great and it sounds easy and it can be but as i said you got to have some creative juices flowing as well you can't look at another person and say well oh, if i just get all the stuff and go home then i'm going to create the same items that they create because that's not necessarily true because i see some shirts out right now that <laughs> they probably just spent a few more hours on youtube they're not very good so just i, I would just say invest the time and energy in your craft before you put it out because once you put it out then you can't get it back you know that first impression type thing so if you have people walking around with crappy shirts and you know the vinyl's coming off then people are going to you know probably put that with your reputation and you won't be able to get that back so just make sure you you know go slow you have all your little ducks in a row before you put it out there into the atmosphere and you just take the time and effort and you just be intentional about what you're trying to do okay yeah. intentional that's a great word yes um if you're trying to make money then you have to keep that at the forefront but not to the point where you are cutting corners and you know you don't have quality so just just keeping everything in the forefront of whatever it is you're trying to do is what I would say. And that's pretty much, I mean, that's a general for anything you're doing as far as business, I would think. <laughs> so all this kind of stuff I, I tell my students and we talk about it and I tell them, you know, this is theory, but it doesn't always, you know, you know exactly what you're supposed to do, but application is something totally different. So, you know, we talk about business planning and all of that other stuff. And I'm like, I found myself thinking, oh, I, we, we've talked about this in class, but this isn't quite how <laughs> I thought it would go. So, so right. you yeah, teach so you, it, right? I teach it, yeah. yes. But in the book, everything goes according to plan. Mm. 
everything is X, Y, you know, it's just according to plan. But in real life, we have little, you know, side roads and, you know, blocks, roadblocks that pop up in your way. So just be persistent, but patient, I would say. That sounds like great advice, Valencia. I, I really like how you pointed out theory versus practical, right? And yes. how there needs to be a balance. You need to know theory and have that knowledge, but also be ready for the practical to happen. Yeah, that makes sense. What's that behind you that you have? That's my number one seller for this week. Um, my Juneteenth shirt there. And she's standing in front of my cabinet, guys. So this is my craft cabinet. So one of the things, depending on your situation, you may not have a, des a designated craft room. You may be using another room. I was hidden away and spending tons of hours on crafts away from my family. So I decided I wanted to come back down to the family, but I still need a way to hide all of this stuff. Um, so there is a nifty craft boxes out and let me just tell you there are going to be so many things that you see that you're going to want that's commercially <laughs> produced it's going to cost an exorbitant amount of money mm. to figure out how you're going to do it so there's a craft box it's like mm, $2,100 to purchase you have to put it together for yourself $2,100 sounds like someone's going to come and put it together for you right right so yeah, you had to put it together yourself, but it was really nice though. It opens up, it has a table and all the stuff that comes out and then it folds up. Um, so I found a DIY uh, video where this girl was putting together her own craft box. It's supposed to be similar to that one. Um, and it cost about maybe about $400 for us to put it together. So we bought the, the, bookshelves and put them together and they're on wheels. Uh, want me to demonstrate? Sure. It closes. So if you have, if it's in a room and you, you know, just want to close it off, you can close it and have everything in there and then it's open and you can put all your little trays in there and just whatever you want. But it's storage. Um, because you're going to definitely need storage. Um, and you're going to need to have storage where you can get to the stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's my DIY craft closet there. That's been a lifesaver. That is nice. And wow, what a whopping savings, right? We'll definitely drop her video link in the description box below. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because that's definitely worth, worth a look. That looks awesome. I think I need something for that. I'm not... I'm not showing my background today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Valencia, for taking the time out of your day to share with uh, skillful teachers about your side hustle and um, your wonderful business. I just love that. Brown Girls Designs and making the graphic tees and tumblers, and you do a great job with that as well. Any parting words for the skillful teachers? I would just say, um, if you have a desire to do something, don't be afraid. Um, I would say that I've probably been kind of just sliding along for quite some time. And uh, when I came out with kind of relaunch, all my friends were like, what have you been waiting for? We've been waiting for you. We have been waiting for this. So I would say if you have it in your heart and you have the abilities, go for it. What's the worst that can happen? Right. Absolutely. Oh, well, I know what could happen. You could be <laughs> very, very, very busy like you right. are now, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good kind of busy. It's Absolutely. A right. Well, thank you again for um, joining us. We really appreciate you sharing this with us, just reminding us that we can do other things as well on the side to help us um, during our skillful teaching journey. And I'm so happy that you decided to share this because we know we need to work together and share with each other. Because when we do that, sharing is caring, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. And we know that quality teaching is quality education. <laughs>